the word you hear that cleanses your mind when your mind has been cleansed your life is holy if you are not taught who christ is you cannot live an effective christian life there is no other honor greater than that of sonship worldliness is the trap that enslaves men to the devil relationship with god is a gift fellowship is a choice the true expression of divine love is forgiveness to others what you pursue is an expression of what you desire being O barren you have not born break forth into singing and cry aloud you have not labored with child for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married woman says the Lord everybody read verse 2 enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwelling do not spare lengthen your cord and strengthen your sticks verse 3 for you shall expand to the right and to the left and your descendants will inherit the nations and make the desolate cities inhabited let's take verse 2 and 3 again everybody go enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwelling do not spare lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes for you shall expand to the right and to the left and your descendants will inherit the nations and make the desolate cities inhabited the relevance of capacity part two hallelujah this scripture has a revelation that is important that we follow and actually try to understand what God is showing us through there he said he began by speaking to the barren woman he said so this woman was barren he said all right barren woman sing forth break out in singing in verse 2 he says enlarge your tent right let them expand the dwellings of your the, of your curtains he says do not spare lengthen your cords verse 3 says now for you shall break forth you shall expand so the purpose of god was to bring them into expansion but god says the expansion you desire is a function of the capacity you acquire he says you need to break forth to the north and break forth to the south but verse 2 says enlarge your tent enlarge your tent enlarge your tent enlarge your tent so you are praying for an increase but god says something powerful here the expansion you desire is a function of the capacity you acquire do you understand me enlarge your tent now in verse 3 there is a prophecy what god will do in verse 2 there is an instruction of what you should do glory be to god it is your responsibility to build capacity so you can experience the expansion that god has prepared for you god says i am preparing an expansion for your life but this cannot happen unless you build capacity he said calabar enlarge your tent give me that verse 2 again enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwelling do not spare lengthen your cords strengthen your sticks god says do not spare why do not spare do not spare why do he say do not spare because it is very clear it is the capacity you carry that determines the portion of grace you can bear in destiny many of us we do pray for the grace of god we pray for his anointing but you must understand today that it is a capacity you build that determines the portion of grace you can bear in destiny so it god does not give you what you ask for god gives you what you can bear so the most important one of the one of the most important thing now is to build capacity so every time there is a prophecy for expansion from god there is a responsibility for capacity to man so while you are praying you see that father in the name of jesus i pray that you you usher me to be 
a great businessman that's your prayer when God answers your prayer he will tell you to, he will bring an opportunity for you to build capacity the response of your prayer for expansion is the instruction to build capacity when you pray and say Lord I want to get married God responds by asking you to build capacity if that instruction has not come then the expansion is not in view there will never be any form of expansion in your life when you have not increased capacity of your mind it will never happen there's no prayer you can pray there's no all you can be anointed with this thing is not magical it is an automatic response to something you do so you must understand the relevance of building capacity he did not come and say i will enlarge for you say you enlarge your tent so god is saying that you should indulge yourself in the activities that make for the increase of your capacity that's what god is saying be careful child of god if you do things that don't increase your capacity you are going down in life now when you are conscious of building capacity you discipline who comes around you and the activities you do because you start seeing that this friend i have what are you building in my life these are you begin to check friends these are you check activities you will not give yourself to an activity that does not build any capacity in you because it's a waste of time child of god everybody has 24 hours a day but it is what you can do with your time that determines what you become in life when you spend your time you end up in regrets but if you invest your time to build capacity you will end up with profit those who spend their time in activities that don't build capacity you must regret but those who invest that time there is no i don't have an issue whether you are working or not but what are you doing today what did you do for 24 hours did you involve yourself in activities that build your capacity lift your hands say lord in the name of jesus give me discipline child of god it is important we understand how important capacity is in Mark chapter 11 verse 13 he said Jesus was walking and he saw a fig tree and, and from afar and there were leaves on the fig tree he came to the tree expecting to find fruit and he came he said finding no fruit he caused the tree now look at the scenario Jesus Christ the Lord Lord of all comes to a tree and we understand by prophetic revelation that tree is symbolic of many say the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree so anytime the bible speaks of tree by revelation you can understand it means man he's saying that the lord came to this man or whoever he was expecting to find fruits but saw only leaves this makes me understand that it is the ability you have that attract opportunities to you but it is your capacity that helps you sustain them this is why there are many of us things if you have this kind of life where things enter and go out is a sign that you lack capacity because capacity determines what you can sustain do you understand what i mean what you can sustain if if i take a glass if i take a bottle for example one liter and i put it under the tap immediately the bottle gets full what happens to the water it begins to flow it begins to drop down because its capacity is one liter it cannot go more than that do you understand me so if you realize that this time in your life you go up then you come down instability of growth in life is a symptom that you are sick of lack of capacity if you realize that today your marriage is fine tomorrow you will fine next you are fine this kind of life of Bible says the part of the jaws is like a light that shines brighter and brighter which means by divine ordinance the part of the righteous should increase in glory and not increase diminish increase again rediminish man of god my life at the goal come down if you have that kind of a life don't blame satan you have a problem in your capacity
capacity so you pray you pray and you pray and because of your prayer your your god gives you favor and you attract opportunity you attract helpers but because you lack capacity you cannot keep them so things keep entering your life and they go out jesus came to this man imagine what could have happened to that tree's destiny but he left because there was no capacity to keep him there was nothing there as a pastor i can tell you this truth that we pastors if everyone that came to our church stayed there <laughs> if everyone that came to this church stayed now we have about fifty thousand members because per week we have at least per week at least 100 visitors one month is 400 one year is how many four thousand eight hundred so i prophesy i hear the sick it will attract them but when they enter here it's the excellence of my wisdom that will sustain them and keep them here it's not this there's a way you make your life it attracts some kind of people there's a way you increase your capacity some other people as stop coming it says gentiles shall come to your light not to your face to your light then he says stop he said but kings will come to the brightness of your rising watch gentiles pagans these people that know they are seem to be struggling in life they have a small business to your life he said but when you rise kings will come so you cannot expect to attract kings to your life by your life kings are only attracted by the brightness of your rising so you can have a business somewhere and you attract only okada people i'm not speaking against okada people and you attract only them and you increase in your capacity you begin to attract governors in the same business so it is not prayer that will have. if you by mistake pray and and maybe pray pray and fast and favor come and a governor comes once he may never come back again because that prayer will attract him but you will lack the necessary capacity to sustain him so you will come and enter your restaurant and eat once and satan will not drive him he will go and never come back it's not satan it is your incapacity you're unable to keep him so things enter your life and they go out and you don't understand that the reason why such things happen to you is because you don't have capacity even in the occultic world listen to this very well charm does not give capacity charm only gives acceptance there are people who are so lazy that anytime a man is having impressivity he use charm it's not easy to use charm if a woman is selling food and people come to buy from her and we say she has charm i may agree she has charm but for the charm to work she first of all has to know how to cook the charm does not teach her how to cook the arrow the charm only attract you to come and buy what she can cook but if you if the charm attract you and you come there and the food is bad your eye will clear you automatically are you following me here god does not impart capacity it attracts acceptance with in opportunity so you can pray and come to church and i anoint you for favor and because you are anointed you go out and somebody calls you and say hey we need somebody who can do this that's what you ever did and you go for the interview and they don't take you because favor has given you acceptance but the absence of capacity has driven you out of your desired place so jesus come to the tree and causes the tree that's not what he came to do there are many of us sisters here some men didn't come to break your heart they actually came to marry you but they came because they saw leaves when they didn't see fruit they broke your heart and left i'm not saying it's good i'm trying to make you understand that not every heart is breakable not at all not every heart not you don't understand what i'm saying if you think that all you will need is to dress seductive and show your your body you are still a baby my sister you are still you are a child in standard one you think you have to just come i don't i don't like girls who think that their strength is their body it shows how shallow and stupid you are all you all you think you, you think for you if you have big butters you have one lottery that is your lottery in life i don't understand you think if you have big breasts it's breakthrough 
So nobody has to rest in the quarter now because you have big breasts. You must only wear things that people cannot pass. They'll be most, what is the problem? I'm not saying it's a bad thing for you to have those things. They may be gifts from God. But my point is this. As a woman, you cannot make that your, your strength. Because any physical thing may deteriorate. But the spirit, the mind, the, the mind. You can't make that your power. That's why you think, oh, because that is why you, if you look carefully, you keep going through the same kind of stress because you don't understand that your beauty may attract this man. Your, your wisdom, your, but it is capacity that will keep them. Understanding me here. So many of us, we are in church. We don't understand why our life keep going up and down. Where things happen and they change. It's not actually the devil working. It is because we don't have capacity to sustain the things that God brings to us. So in, this, in the first months of the year, the year begins well. You start growing with wealth. Around fourth month, you go back down. It's not Satan. When you experience a cyclical motion in your life, it's a sign that you lack capacity to sustain grace. So things enter your life and they go out. They come, they go. It's not the devil. Um, what have you built? He said, enlarge your tent for you will expand. So God says, because you have to expand, enlarge your tent. Now this makes me understand that many people don't know how to respond to prophecy. You are, you are called out by prophecy and they say, um, the Lord is speaking that he's going to make you great. That kind of thing should frighten you. What, what are the demands of that greatness? It should frighten you. Because when, when you were not supposed to be great, you can sleep at 8 p.m. and wake up at 6 a.m. and watch TV. Now that God says you are great, ask yourself what kind of life will, I, will take you. It is a problem. But we don't understand this. So most of us in church, we keep crying and praying. But we must understand that God's kingdom is, is standing on principles. And one of the best, one of the best, is to build capacity. That is why even God himself, watch this, listen to me, the first assignment of God in your life is to build your capacity through his word. Show me Acts 20 verse 32. Now, see something here. I commend you to the Lord and to the word of his grace that is able to build you up and give you an inheritance. Have you seen that God first of all builds you up before he gives you an inheritance? So, there is no way actually praying for your inheritance when you have not been built is a sign of ignorance of the principles of the kingdom. God says, don't want to pray. Father, give me. God says, forget what I should give you. My, I want to build you up first. These laws cannot be broken. It's so sad that today Christians don't like, no, sorry, some don't like to give themselves to things that will make them grow. I'm afraid that in our generation, all we want is to be enslaved and, and become zombies in churches. Following a man saying, my papa. Not having a life which is not a representation of God's will for you at all, but eh, my papa my papa i'm afraid that we are raising zombies in church who have nothing to say but my papa who are failures in their family my papa they can't pass exam they can't succeed in business they can't be good husband they can't be good about anything my papa i'm under grace what what grace are we under so we want to come with shallow teachings there's an altar holding you i'm not against that because i teach that as well but my point is this this altar these powers what is giving them permission to operate in your life that's the question we must ask all of us first so we don't want to hear messages that will build us up we are only interested in messages that will give to us but god says that is not the order any servant of god that is conscious of the purpose of god is first of all interested in building men before giving to them. You think that <laughs> listen, this is the work of God that we do for a while, and 
and we watch people and I, I move in the night I sit down I want to pray when I start praying I start looking at all these workers and I ask myself where would this guy be in 10 years this is how I pray where would he don't say my future is bright which future are you talking about so people are just taught to give conviction no my future is bright my future is bright but a man who sits down today his future is not bright his future is sleeping it is the man who is making steps that will get to any future that's why even in church today people are more people are more interested in having helpers than having investors because they want pity so they go about telling people their problem and they suffer and never chop so they can pity you and give you money don't you know that when you tell people your problem you attract helpers when you tell them your projects you attract investors but if i come to church and say let us pray for investors most of you will not pray because you don't have no project that is worthy of investment so the highest prayer become my helper oh my helper oh lord give me a helper let us wake up all of us and pray for investor 90 percent will not pray because there is nothing worthy of investment in your life you don't have a project that we can so anything is my helper my helper house rent my helper oh do you want to be a slave forever if i give you ten thousand today to eat what will you eat next month can't you think that in deep things on that so your whole life you want to be like that so in church we are why christians are praying for helpers pagans are working for investors at the end christians end up begging from the pagans that have investors many of you people who came to you as helpers were actually investors he came with 20 million to invest are you at the same as you sir i'm suffering my life i'm not this is money in my family girls don't marry our brothers don't prosper you give me 50 thousand and go who want to invest in a failure no you are telling me that your family is and and you are a boy in that family so what makes me believe that if i give you my money you will prosper what will I do? I don't give you 50,000. I say, I share it. That's why you have friends. They prefer to buy you drink than to give you money. Because they want to be your helper. Oh. They prefer to be paying your house rent every month than to give you like 500,000 to start a business. So you are in... Be wise so. So you are enslaved. Be careful. Most men that even help us, they... they they enjoy us asking for help constantly so they never invest they only help by help you cannot rise help you will only survive by investment that's why grace is not help grace is investment when god grace is a divine investment in the spirits of man to produce godly results on earth see where i am today this is grace it is more than help so somebody comes to your life this Ah, Kato Vesh Kibra. Hear me. This, this morning, I'll say some things. Sit down, please. The things I will say. Let's be straight. I had a child, a son. Eh? And let me tell you something. With our projects, we had, well, we had issues that needed money. And the man has money. So I said, okay, give us even three months to do this thing. The man turned us, for, turned us today, turned us tomorrow. Then one day he came to me and said, Sir, um, that he has two people that want him to invest in their business. One was 65 million, one was about 52 million. Those guys were pagans. He asked me to pray and tell him which one to invest in. I did that my head clear. This man, I've been asking you for 3 million, you have never given me. But you have 75, 65 million to invest with an unbeliever. I see and say, No vex him, I no help you. The capacity you demonstrated is what showed him what to give you. So this man has 65 million, which means if I also have a project, you could invest it with me. But when it comes to me, he just give you 500,000. It's not the, he has more than that. But he, do, he does not, he see you just for help, not for investment. And you can never become anything like that. You will just be a slave. You will come and cry, cry. You, you say, okay, I pay your house in this month. Next month, you will go back and cry. You have to better refuse and go and sleep in the streets and say no i will not live like this take time and build something that can make you have a life for yourself and provide sustain your family 
listen to me in destiny help is for a while you see there was a man who was sick paralyzed every morning they carried him to the beautiful gate the people who carried him left him at the gate and entered the temple when people help you you will end where they choose that's that's true listen I'm not speaking against her because we all pray for helpers, but I'm trying to make you understand that uh, many a time this my helper, oh, it can be my investor. Oh, if you build capacity, you are connected to so many people. But when you go to them, they see you just worthy of 50,000 when they have five million and invest with pagans and you are a Christian. Hey, ambassador, ambassador, help me. They say, No, what it's in and strong. And the same man will go and invest somewhere else. It's time for us to be smart. So that you can build a certain kind of dimension of yourself that attract this help to you. It's about capacity. Hear me very well. Any attempt to change the version of your life without changing the vision of your mind is in vain. When you go and stand before the mirror and you see yourself in the mirror and your hair is unkempt, do you put your hand in the mirror to comb your hair? What do you do? Whatever you adjust here will reflect there. If you stand before the mirror and your shirt is not buttoned, do you put your hand in the mirror to button your shirt? What do you do? It's the same thing. Your life, the occurrences of your life are the testament of the contents that are hidden in your heart. So when you see in your life poverty, failure, don't try so much to change your life. Understand that something is wrong with your mind. Come back when you arrange your mind. The change you have made in your mind will reflect in your life with time. That is why you keep fighting every day with your husband or your wife. You don't, under, you don't love me. You don't love me. This might is because both of you are two children who are married. So, hey, you don't love me. You don't love me. You think you have to fight. You have to fight a dull woman that married a dull man. So, two dull people. And everything is fine. Everything must, must be coral. No, let's fight. Because nobody has learned. And worst again, you will not have prayer there to spoil everything. To be praying. As if not knowing that, no matter how you pray, God says, when you are prayed, I will tell you one thing. Enlarge your tent. Now, listen to this. The reason why God is interested in you building capacities is number one. When you lack capacity, you break. In Luke chapter 5, verse 4 to 7, the Bible says, When Jesus, Jesus said to Peter, Let down your nets with S for a catch. And Peter said, I will let down the nets. Bring it up, please. When you lack capacity, you break. In the midst of bless of opportunity, you break, you break. When he has stopped, he said, Launch out into the deep and let down your your what? Are you seeing S there at nets? Your nets, verse 5. Hear what Peter says. But Simon said, Look, I will let down there. Jesus said nets. Peter said nets. Now see there. The, 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 the what happened to Peter. Now, this thing happened to Peter because. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking. The seven says they called their partners and they both began to sink. Now watch this. Look at the mind of Jesus. Look at the mind of Peter. It's like two people are going to carry water. The size of their containers is a reflection of the size of their mind. The person going with the small, sometimes some people have no desire for life anymore. So they don't they are not interested in building capacity for things to acquire. Jesus said, I, I am expecting a major breakthrough. Peter, bring your nets. Peter said, Master, even if it's two fish, I'll, I'll manage. You brought a net. And he began to break. So you see why God is interested. Number two, when you lack capacity, heavenly resources will be wasted in your life. Number one, you break. Number two heavenly resources will be wasted in John chapter 6 verse 12 after Jesus has performed a miracle and fed 5,000 men and, and women scripture says Jesus said gather all the fragments let nothing be wasted when people ate and they became full they began to waste what came from above this bread was a miracle bread 
not from a bakery, multiplied, gotten from the realm of the spirit. But even men, when men are satisfied, they can waste what God gives them. You lack capacity, you waste heavenly resources. Great things from heaven come to you and you waste them. And you will not see them again. There are many of us, so many things we have wasted. Number three, when you lack capacity, you limit God. Show me Psalm 78 verse 41. Yes, again and again, they tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. They did what? Hayamaka. So, aye. Hmm. So, the limit of your expansion from God is determined by the borders of your capacity in God. Whether you pray prayer, God says your capacity is the limit. He said these guys limited God. God came to do mighty things for them. But by reason of their lack of capacity, they limited God. So God can be limited in your life. God actually planned for you that this year he will bless you with 20 million. But because of lack of capacity, you finally receive 200,000. There was much more kept for you. But you have not understood that your capacity determines what you will receive. Do you understand what God is saying this morning? They limited God. Can you imagine that? So the limits of your expansion from God is determined by the borders of your capacity in God. The more you expand your capacity, the more you increase the limit of what you can carry. There are people that pray and shout and jump, but you must understand that no matter how much you pray and fast, until you expand and increase your capacity, you will keep limiting God in your destiny. These pizza limited Jesus. Can I tell you something? If pizza, eh, let me shock you. If pizza came with 10 nets, all of them were full. Jesus was prepared to do a miracle that will confuse everybody there. And Peter limited it. When Jesus realized, oh, they took one net, he broke. They put two. The boat began to sink. God said, before we die for here. So you can receive a miracle and die. Their boat was sinking by a miracle from God. They limited God. So you are there shouting, oh God, oh God. God says, till when you ask him, if I give you, you go explode. Any, now let me know sometimes, like this. If you check, the cables that is used on this high tension, is not the same you use in your house. Listen to me. If the, if the voltage of electricity that moves in high tension enter your house, it will, your house will be born in five seconds because these cables we have cannot contain it so when electricians go for high tension the first thing they do is that they put a cable that can contain the kind of current so that it will not break this cable high tension cable it is it is stronger 100 times than what these things you have in the house that's why sometimes when voltage increase what happened tv why, why tv blow because it came beyond the TV's capacity to carry. So the current blow up. That's why you have a, 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 a circuit breaker. When current comes, a circuit breaker stops him. Light go off. Some people like that. Light keeps going off. Because a spiritual circuit breaker. Bap, they are gone. I'm saying the truth. See here, bro. If you take a rope and a rubber. Eh, and take a rope from here to here. You go. And you stretch a rubber. You will keep going. But you know the problem? If you leave the rubber, you will come back. But the rope will stay there. Because the rubber is stretching, but not by increasing capacity, but by elasticity. So no matter where he goes, they have to keep holding him. If you leave him, now if you keep drawing him, he will break in two. But you go with the rope, the rope will go. So if I draw a rope and put there, and draw a rubber, I leave them. The rope will stay. The rubber will come back and remain to where it was. Because he has not capacity for that. So there are people who keep breaking because they don't understand the relevance. Are you following me, child of God? Number four. When you lack capacity, you use divine gifts to show forth, to show off. 
Numbers chapter 11. Verse 16, 17 and verse 25. Let's read it. Numbers 11, 16, 17 and verse 25. So the Lord said to Moses, Gather to me 70 men of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people and officers over them. Bring them to the tabernacle of meeting, that they may stand there with you. Verse 17. Then I will come down and talk with you there. I will, listen to this. I will take of the spirit that is upon you, and I will put the same upon them. That they may do what? And they shall bear the burden of the people with you, that you may not bear it yourself alone. Verse 25. See what happened when the spirit came on them. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took the spirit that was upon him and placed the same upon the seventy elders. And it happened when the spirit rested upon them that they prophesied, although they never did so again. Another version says, when the spirit came, they prophesied all day and they never did so again. Watch. The purpose of that anointing was to help them and help Moses carry burden. But when they had no capacity, City. when the unction came they began shouting the same anointing that Moses carried and nobody heard his voice in the nation when people lack capacity just call him now and give him a shoe of 200,000 francs he may put the shoe on his neck like a chain because it's true the, the, the reflex is to show forth there are women that wear that I don't know how you call those but let's say I don't know which one is the most expensive is it Brazilian mesh or is Canadian mesh who is the most expensive let's say let's Brazilian Indian anyway let's say human human hair now there are people that have human hair and you don't know if some people wear it for their first time hi I said I said did you my hair hi how did it Then, when nobody notices it, so, I say, you never use the, the brand for you, my hair. You, you must, you, they have to know the brand. They, have you ever worn a watch? Nobody notices the watch. Uh-uh. Hmm. I God don't help me. Oh. God, God, God don't help me. No matter talk, you just look at your watch again. Say, Master, you never see this, um, this new watch. I just, you, you, because you don't understand that, you have to look by time. No, you want to show them the watch. That's what happens. So people are wasting divine gifts because they have no capacity. So when it comes, there are people give them one million. The first place they go is to buy dresses. For them, it is time to paint the damn green, red, blue. This they go and buy dresses, buy expensive shoes. You see them appear the next week. I say, listen to me, prosperity is not in your dressing. And they just come and say, What's on my day? And I meet me for you. As you go there, they enter there. If you by mistake speak to them rudely, you don't have a missile, they remove money and slap you. Take the one, deliver you are delivered from him from deliver from anger. You crazy. You know me. No capacity. While there are people who hold 100 million in their pocket, come and sit in church after safe is go back home. Nobody knows. There are people who have 200 million in, in their pocket. They, they travel to and go and buy and come back. Some people, I mean, 1 million. As he enter, pop the pool music. Everybody come and celebrate. Come and jubilate. Money no enter. He don't come. Everybody come and celebrate. No matter what he, he don't enter. Oh, it's 1 million. Next thing. But who's on a day? This night will he meet up? No, no. He has no project, no purpose. So you will waste it. There are people here. If you give them one million in two months, they give you five million. There are people here. They are, they, they are ready. To, if God by mistake bless you, God will confirm. <laughs> you, are, you are already strategize. <laughs> Waiting for God to catch him like Jacob and say, Pai, you need to go. But there are people, if they meet God, God say, What do you want? They say, I want iPhone. God came to Solomon and said, what do you want? And Solomon said, sir, you have made me king in Israel, but I am a child and your people are many. How can I lead them? So give me wisdom. And God said, 
because you have asked for wisdom i will also give you what you didn't ask i'll give you riches and life now the prayer point of solomon was for capacity not for things and the prayer point so much please god that god said even though you did not ask for money riches and long life but because you have asked for capacity it is impossible to have this kind of capacity and be poor so while i'm giving you this wisdom knowledge understanding i will add riches honor and long life so solomon did not pray to have material things it god's Bible say and the prayer please the lord prayers no, so I'm not going to pray. Father, do it, do it. Listen to me. And if you want to attract the attention of God in the place of prayer, pray prayers that increase capacity. Father, give me wisdom. God say, ah, this is serious. Father, give me knowledge. Teach me how to manage my husband. God say, this my daughter is not talking. Teach me how to raise my children. God say, ah, she's ready. Be careful. Of, if God says Solomon, because you didn't ask for riches for long life or the life of your enemies so there are three things that we pray that God does not like a lot praying for money now Bible for life and for your enemies to die now Bible look me I talk how look me so ah bring first things chapter three verse eleven the way they are looking at me sir I just said something which is out from somewhere you know everybody is shocked what says thou then God said to him because you have asked this thing and have not asked for long life for yourself nor have asked for riches for yourself nor have asked for the life of your enemies but you have asked for yourself understanding to discern justice verse 12 behold i have done according to your words i have given you a white adobe cutter an understanding heart so that there has not been anyone like you before you nor shall be after you verse 13 and i have also given you what you have not asked both riches and honor so that there shall not be anyone like you among the kings of all your days god is saying that because you have not prayed for money because you have not prayed for long life and because you have not prayed for your enemies to die I am happy with your prayer point but this kind of prayer constitutes 90 percent of our prayers not that we pray 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 but we don't attract the necessary grace to move ahead in life because we pray for money for long life or for enemies to die while a wise man prays for wisdom for understanding and knowledge for law for faith for righteousness for patience for peace for joy people who are immature is let them die Are you seeing scripture? So you imagine three one days of operation, they die. It shall be better three one days of operation with operation wisdom. Operation wisdom to be a good wife. You enter fasting. Lika para coach came and greti kalatasa. This prayer praying for that girl answer will not die. She has hold, she's holding my husband. Die, die, my sister, headache, leave the team. You don't lose round one. Rearrange yourself. Come back for round two. You win the battle. But since there is no capacity, it is time to fight. It is time everything he must scatter. Wait, till no man can take. He must scatter. It is that thing that keeps pushing the man away. You don't know how to handle things. No matter how you put it, this thing is beyond beauty, my sister. It's, it is about your capacity to accommodate his excesses. He said, This one. They say, So instead of praying for pray for wisdom, don't pray for marriage. Pray for wisdom to be a wife. And as a girl, you start exhibiting characters of a wife that a man will see you and say, Sister, can I marry you? If I have a magnet and I move in a room where there are needles, they will come to me. Not so. I will not go to them. Because the magnet has something that attracts the needle to itself. When you build capacity, automatically you attract opportunities, helpers, and investors to your destiny. People see you and they are interested to work with you. They are interested. You don't have to beg them. You don't have to shout and cry. So, it's not about looking for how much, how much oil. No, it's much more about looking for how much of God can you contain. Now, let me give you some things here. Lift your hands and say, Father. In the name of Jesus, help me to be focused on building capacity. Now, I think you have heard something there in what I said about Solomon. I think it's in First Kings four twenty. It says, "And God gave Solomon a large heart, a large heart."
this God there. Father, Abraham, Sarah, Ishmael may not have been the will of God, but it was a test of the preparedness of Abraham to become a father. When you pray for two million, God will give you two hundred thousand to see how you can handle it, lest He gives you something that will take you away from Him. Now, this is my point. What is the purpose of capacity? Number one, your capacity determines what you can contain. Show me Psalms 81 verse 10. It says, open your mouth wide and I will fill it. Open your mouth. So, God is encouraging you that when you are coming to him, don't be, come with big dreams, but this is the purpose. You, if you increase your capacity, there will be no room. Increase it. Open, can I tell you something? If by grace we are privileged and God give us space and we build a larger, a larger church, it will still flop. There is no church. Yet we got to talk. This is not Kevin. There is no building we will build that God will not fill. You hear what I'm saying? There is no business you will do that God will not fill. He said, oh, Open your mouth wide and we fill it. So don't limit him coming with a small container. You serve a big God. Have a big dream. Then when you have a big dream, you have a big capacity to accommodate that big dream. Let your dream, if your dream does not appear crazy, it's not big enough. The kind of vision that you think you fight, you say, I'm going to do it. It means not God. Where, where you put pressure on God to show himself extremely mighty on your behalf. Your capacity capacity determines what you can contain number two your capacity determines the supply you receive from heaven second king chapter 4 verse 3 to 6 verse 6 especially bible says after elisha told the woman to borrow jars and pour oil the woman went and borrowed jars and the bible says when she was pouring the oil makota kibara dashkita she asked her son bring me another jar and the boy said the jars are finished he said and the oil stopped so the the oil has ear. It means the flow of divine supply is the response to the capacity man has built. Immediately the vessels finished, the oil ceased. There was much more oil in heaven, but oil that they received. So God will only supply to you in the dimension of what you, you can contain. So, Hmm. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want Lord, I want nothing to make to be a billionaire. God is saying, My child, can you contain this thing? Lord, anointing to rest is there. God said, No, Kevin, I will not give it to you. That's why, even us in the ministry, there are times when God wants to encourage us, He allows us to manifest an anointing one time, it doesn't happen again. You do one miracle that is so powerful, you try to repeat it, the thing fail. Because now you have to build capacity and enter that dimension. It was just an encouragement God gave you, so you should not get discouraged as you walk with Him. You just come to Christ. It's sweet. Anything God's talking to you. After you have to fast for God to talk. But when you came, God was just talking. God was your friend. You sleep. You sleep. You're having dreams. You see angels you're in heaven. Now you sleep. They're in your village. They're following you. See, well, nothing has happened to you. <laughs> eh? It determines what you can. So what will be supplied from heaven is not a function of your prayer. It's a function of the capacity you have. So you can pray and shout and ask for God to supply you. Father, I want a guy who is fair in complexion. He's tall, six packs. He has a jeep. And you have a Nangfang Okada mindset. God said, no, I'll give you Sanili husband. He cannot, God will not give Homa Jeep to Nanfang. You know Nanfang, that bike. So if you want to have a Homa Jeep type of husband, you must be a Prado Jeep type of wife. Listen to me. There was one time a young man came to me. He came to one sister in this church. He said, I want to marry her. The sister refused. He came and told her, she, the sister is proud. She's wicked. I said, why? He said, he spoke to her. She doesn't want to answer him. 
I said, bro, oh, I don't pack me how much. I said, but if I shift, I said, I come on, shift. Don't think that we may, you, because we're in the same church, Greg, Greg, what is Greg, Greg, <laughs> You think Greg, Greg is a bribe? <laughs> you go to one sister who, who, who has taken time and build herself. And you come, you, your, 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 And the same guy, I showed him a girl to go to. You see, no wonder one. I said, You see, you know, wonder one. I, so, you don't want your kind. You don't want a, a bike and a car that type of girl. You want a woman jeep and you are saying, I a bike. I said, The girl is not proud. You are not in her version. It's not pride. She's not being wicked. She, I thought, No. Don't, it's not. She, no, she's proud. Talk. I said, I need to talk. No, nothing. I said, Shift. Shift. You don't pack for wrong place. She, she's proud. She's proud. No, I said God will not supply you that kind of wife. Yes, you can pray, Father, give me sister goodness as my wife. I receive her. I catch her. You must marry me. Lika Barado. God says I will not give you. You will kill that girl. You don't have. When she will land you one bill, one. You will fast for forty days. Not just material, you no. She may have a wisdom that you cannot contain. When she speaks, you say, eh, "Now God, anything is grace." Now God, now God, because there's no, <laughs> there's no wisdom to talk. Anything now grace, now God, now na grace, now God. The hell we? a project. Now God, now God. Go hell we? How will do tomorrow? Sister, move the whole God in hand. God, as I'm forgetting about top. God, go. She over hold my hand. You see, but she wants to hear project. She wants to hear in three years we'll do this. You're just like, mm, now God, now God. As you see me, so Adele win. Adele leave. And then say, win, carry me. I go. She, she. <laughs> that kind of work, I know I know the thing. When you receive a supply of something that is beyond your capacity, your life rejects it. There are some people there. Eh, buy a shoe of 20,000 and give them. After two weeks, you see holes on the shoe. They cannot sustain it. So buy them, Batula. Yes, it's not wicked. That's what they can manage. You buy him something, you will spoil it. Number three. Your capacity gives you the ability to take advantage of opportunity. Your capacity gives you the ability to take or your capacity enables you is better to take advantage of opportunity proverbs 21 verse 31 he says the horse is prepared for the day of battle but deliverance is from the lord although deliverance is from the lord the horse is still prepared because how will god bring deliverance through an unprepared horse lest the horse see battle and run back I need to fight, fight again. I go back. <laughs> Luke 1 verse 80. He said, And John waxed strong and stayed in the desert until the day of his manifestation. God kept this to me. You know, people say, eh, This man just came from nowhere. Nobody come from nowhere. People come from the womb of preparation. Hear me very well. He it's just nobody come, nobody appears, nobody become great by accident. Nobody appears suddenly. The fact that a man of God just came this year and his church is growing does not mean that's where he's began. This man will have been before God for 20 years. You don't know. So the fact that you saw him today, you cannot judge his life. There are people there. Eh, they can start business this month. In three months, they're in 20 million. You say, they use Sam. It all can start now. So the fact that he began the business now does not mean he's not beginning the business with God since. Some people, before they start business, they have been doing business in their mind. You don't get what I'm saying. Nobody appears like that. Sure, come on, such a game on this one. It didn't happen by night. No, this is nothing happens overnight. A woman may come, go, and put to bed today, but the pregnancy was nine months in her womb. Not to talk about the trials for her to be pregnant. 
Are you listening to me here? The horse is prepared for the day of battle. But deliverance is from the Lord. So while you are waiting for the Lord to deliver you, God says prepare for the day of battle. When time and chance happen to them all, a man that has capacity will know how to take advantage of time and chance and enter greatness. Because everyone, it happens to them. Uh, when you are praying and not building capacity opportunity will come for that prayer point you will not have it I get what I'm saying it will come and you will not be able to have access to what you have been shouting for because the thing has come but you don't have capacity you have capacity lift your hands say Lord in the name of Jesus Help me build capacity. Now, we need to build capacity in three areas. Number one, number one, you must build spiritual capacity. You must do what? Philippians 4 verse 13. He said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Listen to this. The platform for capacity is spiritual. The first kind of capacity you must build is what? Spiritual. The capacity of your spirit man. The capacity of your spirit. You must build spiritual capacity by the things you do. That's why you must be involved in spiritual activities like worship, like prayer, like coming to church because all these things we do. Now you are in church. Do you know what you are doing now? You are building spiritual capacity. When you don't build spiritual capacity, you cannot, listen to me, your victory in spiritual warfare is a function of the spiritual capacity you have built. That's why some battles can be more than you. Another person comes and he overcomes there. It's not that he serves a different God. This one has so much built capacity that what he can handle in the spirit, you cannot handle. Please, what kind of prayer was Daniel praying that principalities came and fought? One man prayed and, and Satan left his throne and they were fighting up. Capacity. When you build that things, it is issue, it breaks you. Ah, no capacity. The first thing you must build, you must be committed. Because that is the foundation. Your spiritual capacity is the foundation for every to sustain the blessings and the graces that God gives you on earth. It is important. There are many people on earth who have built mental capacity but not spiritual capacity. That is why at the end of the day, they will end up in hell because when the devil will come after them, they will be caught. The reason why Eve was easily tempted was because Eve had not built spiritual capacity. When a man has built spiritual capacity, he has the ability to resist the devil in the midst of temptation. If you keep falling in temptation, it's a sign that you have not built spiritual capacity. That's why you have to be praying. That's why, that's why you have to pray. Because prayer, through prayer, a man builds his capacity in the spirit. And contains much more. There's an anointing with desire. Want to take over this nation. It, it can only come through men that have very large spiritual capacity because the anointing to take over a nation is not the anointing to have one church in one town somewhere no no, no that kind of anointing is 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 heavy it's major it's large so it needs a man that has built spiritual capacity to contain that kind of mantle because every mantle attracts a battle don't dare face goliath if you're not anointed like david you will die Saul was not stupid to hide himself. He knew he had lost the oil. He knows that when a man has lost capacity, if he goes and attacks the devil, he will be a victim of his arrogance. Never mistake arrogance for confidence. Have you not seen people say, and they go go cut that tree, and they cut the tree, and madness follow them? Why did they cut the tree and they get mad? Because they went to attack a demon, and, and they don't have capacity easy to fight that kind of a battle that's why a prophet is a gift but not to have a childish prophet is a curse because he himself is a child so who, who will now protect who imagine calling a child your father all of you are in trouble 
What is that? It's not about Asia. It's about the capacity. Number two, you must build mental capacity. Proverbs 23, verse 7 it says, As a man thinketh, so be. Dear people of God, the transformation of the mind is the greatest requirement for the improvement of life. It says, Romans 12, verse 2, Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Hear me. Many of us in church and Christians, we are focused on building spiritual capacity. And that is good. But until we learn how to also build mental capacity. My dear, read books. You get me? Read books. Read books. The transformation of the mind is the greatest requirement for the improvement of your life. No matter how you pray and fast, the quality of your life is not determined by the quality of your prayer. It's determined by the quality of your mind. As a man thinks, so is he. So, you must make intentional and conscious steps to transform your mind. Mental. Mental. That's what the greatest enslavement is mental. Stupidity and dullness is a curse. My people perish for lack of knowledge. Mental. You want to get married, my sister, read books on wife. My brother, read books on being a husband. What are you doing? It's a mental transformation. You will enter marriage and see what your mother saw unless you know what your mother did not know. You must improve. You cannot... The, the law of improving on your father's experience is improving on their revelation of God. You must know more. So, many Christians... Listen to me. You can't read only the Bible and succeed in life. On earth, you will not survive. You will not pass chemistry by reading the book of Matthew. You have to read books on business. Yes, of course. Read books on business. You are getting married. Read books even on, on the purpose of sex in marriage. Don't say, no, I'm a Christian with your spirit. You will know that that thing can bring trouble in your marriage. Because when you get there, you will not know. Which, these things, this knowledge is free inside books. We don't want them. Ah, Katoski Bahang Radishka. Can I do something? Leave an Ambrose Kepra. Riches, money is stored in banks, but wealth is stored in books and in the hearts of men. So, when you read books, you have access to wealth, not to money. And know that money is an offspring of wealth. A wealthy man is a mindset. There is no wealthy man that is not rich, it's not possible. I wish above all that you may prosper in all things and be in health, even as your soul, your mind prospers. Mental transformation. So we are good at prayer. 40 days fasting. Yeah, we are there. And we fast and bring the heavens down. But our life does not change because remember that your mind is the gateway into your life. That's why God and Satan, they are fighting to control your mind, not your spirit. When you are born again, your spirit received the Holy Ghost. So you have a new spirit. But your mind is still sinful your mind see things of sex your mind see things of fear now your mind has to be transformed you have to read any sour you don't know you go fall there's never listen to me never ever try to have anything you don't know about it no matter how good it is it may kill you mental transformation i'm begging you involve yourself you cannot read books. Ask questions. I say wealth is taught in books and in hearts. Ask a man. I want to know, how did you do this cocoa business? How did you start? The person will teach you truths that are not in books. Teach you mysteries that you cannot learn anywhere. So, if you read only the Bible, you, uh, you, it's not, you, you will not. There are books written by men that God has given them wisdom. Read their books. Receive their knowledge. You need mental transformation in order to prevail on earth. You have to change the way you think. You have to change the way you reason. You have to change the way you react. You have to change the way you, you behave yourself. And this can only happen when you are interested in changing your mind. 
I repeat that the quality of your life is a function of the quality of your mind. So how focused are you to arrange your mind? It's not everything you watch on TV. You must be careful what you watch and what you hear because your mind can become a dustbin for, 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 for rubbish to be dumped into your mind. And it changes the way you behave. And you begin to behave wrongly because you don't understand that your life is at the detriment of your mind. What is bringing you down is not the devil. And even if the devil wants to operate, he operates in your mind. Second Corinthians 4 verse 4. He said the God of this world has blinded the mind of those who don't believe so that the light of the gospel will not shine on them. He blinds their mind. So they are in church, but they don't see the light in church. And they are seeing light of this world, but they didn't see light. Not because the spirit is weak. They pray eight hours every day, but their mind is dull. Forgive me the word. So God said, okay, mental transformation. Open yourself to teaching. Open yourself to knowledge. Read. You, don't, you cannot read. You didn't go to school. No problem. Listen to what? Listen to people. Listen to what? Listen to people that know what you need. Humility is, a, humility is important on earth. If you think you know everything, you're on your first step to your grief. Wherever you're going to, somebody knows the way. It is wisdom to follow the way they have. They, they, they. When you're going to Duala, you don't look for your own route. You follow the road somebody. You don't know the person who committed that route. We don't even care. It takes us to where we are going to. It's the same thing I want you to understand. The third dimension of capacity you should build is emotional capacity. Show me Proverbs 25 verse 28. Read that. Whoever has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down without walls. Hey, this one bad. It means if you have spiritual capacity, mental capacity, and not emotional capacity, it says you'll be like a city broken down. It means whatever you acquire spiritually and acquire mentally because you don't have emotional capacity, you will lose everything. It means emotional capacity is the guardian of end of everything that enters your life. If you have a spiritual capacity and you can pray and you receive grace from God, you have mental capacity and you can start a business in open, but you cannot control anger. One day you will take you will take your hand and take bottle and break it on the head of the man you were praying that you want to marry. You prayed, prayed unto favor brought him. Then you broke his head with the bottle because you don't have emotional anger comes you, you misbehave loss is there emotional capacity many people have built spiritual mental but they lack emotional the ability to handle the situations of life is emotional capacity are you hearing child of god it's a man that has no control over his own spirit it's like a city broken down without walls without no protection your Emotions are important because they bring stability and balance in destiny. That's why Satan comes after your emotion. So you see somebody? Listen to this. Ah. God used us to intervene in a case this week. One young man whom I love so much. The young man prays a lot. This he has done 40 days fasting about twice. Done 21 days fasting as well. Pray, 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 pray. I mean, every month he does about seven days fasting to pray for the time to take over. He prayed like that, dear people of God. Prayed like that. And went for evangelism and preached to a girl and brought her to the house and slept with her. Wait. While he was sleeping with her, she started bleeding. She bled four liters of blood and went. Gone. Collapsed. Gone. They went to hospital. Hospital drove them. He called. He began crying. Can you see the trap? What will you explain? What were you doing? Would they not say it was initiation? Now what did happen? The man called and was crying. He says, sir, help me. This thing wants to kill me. When he called, I don't lie you. I, I started trembling. Because, see, how you, how, how you feel explain that kind of thing? You go start now. That what were you doing before she bled for the Hospital just said, no, 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 take her. Collapsed. I don't want to use the word dead. Because in his message, he said, sir, I don't want to say, my God, I cried. But you see, he could fast. He could pray. He could do miracles. But in his emotion, they were still lost. Satan used it. We now prayed. 
as I prayed for the girl, pop, she came back. Hey, this is wait. She came back. She was fine. They went back to hospital. They checked. Her blood had gone back to 10. What kind of agenda was that? They, they, they wanted to transfuse her blood. They checked. He has gone to 10. They said, what is happening? I called him and said, my brother, now die so. Please say, what would that guy have? This is how many of us have prayed for things. And we didn't have the emotional stability to sustain them. Anger, lust, pride, fear, worry. You must be careful and build emotional capacity. I tell you the truth. It's very dangerous. Nowadays, it's dangerous. What could have happened to that young man? David was a king. And David stood on the height of his throne. On the height of his kingdom. And looked down. And saw a man's wife and said, Bring me that woman. They brought her to him. Who are you? I am Bathsheba, the wife of Uriah. It doesn't matter. Slept with her. She got pregnant. Killed the husband. That thing had always been the weakness of David. But this time around, for what he did, God cursed him and his family. God said, The sword will never depart from your family. And what you did with her in the private, your sons would do. David's son slept with his ten wives on the roof. For that thing. For being, you must examine your life and see where you are weak and build capacity in that area. Because a man can be, Moses opened the Red Sea. He did it. Bring water from the rock. He didn't enter the promised land. Why? At the gate. Anger. So you could conquer Pharaoh. He could conquer the Red Sea. You could not conquer anger. So the anger you could not conquer. So there are many of us, we are doing exploits. Sometimes they say, continue, I'm waiting for you. He knows where he will pick you. A man that has no control over his spirit is like a city without walls that is broken down. After fasting for 40 days, you will come out and see your wife say, you fool. And all the anointing you gather for 40 days will be dispensed on the account of anger. Emotional stability. <clears throat> How do you build capacity? Three things. Number one, true knowledge. Show me. We know Daniel 11, verse 32. He says, What? They that know their God shall be, shall be what? Shall be what? Strong. Shall be strong. So, number one, you build capacity through knowledge. They that know their God shall be anything you do that brings knowledge. Knowledge brings growth and growth brings capacity, maturity. So if you want to build your capacity, the first thing is not prayer, is knowledge. Are you following me here? You must desire the knowledge for whatever area, knowledge of God first. Hosea 4 6, my people perish for what? Lack of knowledge. Jeremiah 3 16, God says, I shall give them shepherds after my heart that will feed the sheep with knowledge and understanding. So, God's purpose for you is that you should grow. Are you with me, child of God? Knowledge. Knowledge, child of God. Knowledge. Hear me, dear people of God. In the kingdom of God, your growth is not a function of your age, but the function of your knowledge. <laughs> Show me Job 32, verse 7 to 9. When Job went through afflictions, some of his friends came and spoke to him. And out of them, the youngest one was called Elihu. Hear what he says. Elihu said, I said age should speak. <laughs> and multitude of years should teach wisdom. He said, I allow these fathers to talk. But there is a spirit in a man and the breath of the Almighty give him understanding. Verse 9. Yet he talk. Great men are not always wise. <laughs> Nor do the aged always understand justice. Give me energy. It's the old men. Is some old men are stupid. But the old man still standing up. Stay quiet with that door talk there. But the old man still sitting sit, sit down. Still sit, sitting down. He's a young man not sitting on the tree. That can't tell me can enslave you. Sometimes the elders are not. 
Sometimes the agents do not understand justice. Give me verse 7. He said, I, I, I thought those who are older should speak, for wisdom come with age. He said, but sometimes the older are dull. So, don't be happy that you are growing in age. You may not be growing in stature. If you must grow in stature, you must grow in knowledge. First Peter chapter 2 verse 2. He says, desire the sincere meek of the word that you may grow thereby. So, growth there comes by knowledge. The more you know, the more you grow. That's why some people just came into the kingdom now, in Christianity now, and they are advanced more than those who have been there for 10 years. It's because they have they invested in knowledge, so they have grown. Some people have been there for 10 years, they have not grown. It's not by having gray hair on your head. No, it's the elders in the kingdom are those who have understanding of the word of God. Those are elders, not gray hair. Are you following a child of God? Let us see Luke 252 about Jesus Christ. And he grew in wisdom and stature. The word stature means maturity. So watch. His growth in stature was a function of his growth in wisdom. So when you grow in knowledge, you grow in stature means maturity. When you grow in knowledge, you become more mature to handle things. Knowledge about ma marriage, you mature. Many people are married, but they have not grown in stature in their marriage. They have not grown in stature in business. Any, if you want to grow in stature, you must grow in knowledge. Desire to know. Because when knowledge comes, you increase. Knowledge expands men. Are you following me here? In 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 2, he says, Let grace and peace be multiplied through knowledge. So we see that knowledge brings growth. Eh? It brings growth. 2 Peter 2 verse 2. Number two, knowledge brings maturity. Luke chapter 2 verse 52. And number three, knowledge brings strength. Daniel 11 32. Number one, knowledge brings growth. First Peter 2 verse 2. Number two, knowledge brings maturity. Luke chapter 2 and verse 52. And number three, knowledge brings strength. Daniel 11 verse 32. It brings growth, maturity, and what? Strength. You grow, you mature, and you are strong. And, you, and, and fruitfulness is automatic to growth. That's why trees don't pray to bear fruit. When they grow, fruitfulness is an automatic response of nature to growth. Listen to me. Nature honors the process of growth by fruits. Are you understanding me? Number one, what? Growth. First Peter 2 verse 2. Number two, maturity. Luke chapter 2 verse 52. And number three, strength. Daniel 11 32. Can we move ahead? He said, let grace and peace be multiplied through knowledge. Which means, you can pray for more grace, but the grace you receive depends on the knowledge you have. So the more you grow in knowledge, the more you grow in grace. The more you grow in grace, the more you grow in manifestation. Number two, capacity is built by prayer. Show me Jude chapter 1 verse 20. Jude 1 20. But you beloved, building yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. You see why you have to wake up in the night and pray? Pray your builds capacity. Listen to me. When, when you are still a child in the things of the kingdom, you think prayer is just to get things from God. There are times you pray for something. You end up not getting that thing, but you end up getting capacity. Just the fact that you give yourself to pray, you wake up and you pray. It is good to pray. Prayer builds capacity. You pray. Hear me? If you, have if you are neglecting prayer, sadly, you are neglecting capacity. Pray. Building yourself in your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Ghost. So you wake up in the night and you pray. Kalosh, Kiprak, Tamata. Father, give me wisdom. You pray. Involving yourself in the activity of prayer is a strategy to build your capacity in the spirit. Very powerful. Are you with me? Pray. 
that's why the devil attacks your prayer life because he does not want you to build he knows that with capacity you build you'll be beyond his activity so he affects you and distracts you not to pray Lift your hand say i must pray someone say i must pray are you understanding me prayer me i'm very concerned about people's prayers life i always ask do you still pray because if you still pray no matter where you fall you will rise again if you don't pray ah hmm. uh, prayer jesus prayed luke 18 1 men ought to pray and not to faint you see so when you don't pray you will lack the capacity to handle afflictions and you will faint he said but when you pray you will not faint do you know what it means to faint it means something came that is beyond you so you were overwhelmed by whatever came to you but if you pray and build capacity i tell you the truth you can't be brought down by affliction the third way you build capacity is through trials you may not like this one but i have to say it trials let us see james chapter 1 verse 2 to 4 my brethren count it all joy when you fall into various trials mm -hmm. knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience but let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete lacking nothing are you seeing something there child of god trial or process hear me dear people of god this is very important one of the greatest way to build capacity especially emotional is through trial god permits us to go through trials because emotional capacity is not just built by prayer is built by trials god sees you and realizes that you trust people too quick so god allow a man to come in your life and the man deceive you and go it was god who god wants to teach you not to trust people quickly he used that trial to build your capacity look at what joseph went through he went through the dry pit went through accusation in the house of Potiphar went through imprisonment God was not being wicked to Joseph God was building his emotional capacity that's why when he came to the throne when he saw his brothers he could easily forgive them a man that has gone through process is broken and when a man is broken he's humble people who have not gone through process are proud sometimes God allows some things to happen to you to break you to be in your capacity so this process we go through circumstances though they may be bad sometimes they are permitted by god god uses trials and temptations to build our emotional capacity that's true that's true and this is the thing until you learn what god is teaching you in that issue you never come out from it you see some marriages they have one problem for 10 years and they'll keep having that same problem till one day the same thing will happen and one person react differently it will be the same it is a cyclical movement until one sit down until one day someone will reason i said but every time my husband says i usually say and you don't answer again like that the problem will stop because god brought you guys in that problem to learn how to be patient with one another but every time it happens you must call your husband you fool so god will keep allow your husband make the same mistake to the day you don't call him you fool again so you don't sometimes you don't know that instead sometimes it is a change in your character that will break your marriage out of the trouble but you keep wanting your own partner to change not knowing that it is your own change that is holding the problem it is when you change that the person will change but most time all we want is to change others you want your wife to change god is saying no if you can react differently to this and mistake it will this thing will break you will not break out from this cyclical movement you may never break out from debt, never. Until, until you learn how to manage money well. So you keep being in the same cycle. You think you're out, you enter back again because God is saying you need to learn how to manage money. Are you following me here? Bring up Psalm 16, verse 10 to 12. Let's read that. For you, O oh God, have done what? Have tested us. You have refined us as silver is refined. You brought us into the net. Who brought us? God. You laid affliction on our back. Who? God. You have caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water. But you brought us out to reach. Kijen Vision says you brought us to a wealthy place. 
process. Process is good. You understand? Process is only painful when you don't understand purpose and when you don't want to learn the lesson. So you keep having disappointment because every time a man comes to your life, you make the same mistake to sleep with him first. So God says, it will keep happening to one who will come and you will not sleep with him and see what will happen. If you keep making the same emotional mistake, your life will end up in a cycle. You know, it's like, um, it's like they call it a loop. <laughs> Where your life is blocked on one thing. You go, you start back. You are here. You think you are, you're not advancing. You are actually rotating. Ah, before no, you are here. Ah, not before day of January. You thought that like this. So, February, you are here. March, you are here. For you, your life is moving ahead. April, you are here. June, you are here. July, you are here. August. But for you, since there is motion, you think there is advancement. Not every motion is advancement. Because of this motion, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Do you know you realize, ah, I've come back again to 5,000 to, to be in a loan. Yes, you keep making the same emotional mistake. So your life has entered a cycle. You can only break that cycle when you learn what you have to learn and change your attitude. So people can keep lying against you. People will keep accusing you till you learn to finally forgive them and the thing will stop. It will keep until you pass the exam. You will not leave the classroom. Rise on your feet.